So I've been waiting to make this content. It's about a flight that I did one morning, November the 8th, last year. As soon as I landed, I wrote a Facebook post about it, and I'll put that up there for you guys to read. <laughs> But let me talk to Alan about it here so that he can hear the story too. I come out here one morning early before sunrise and it was foggy. Like I could see the, the dawn breaking over the trees. Dense patchy fog was the weather report. So I pulled out the drone. I rose the drone up maybe 150 feet and looked around in every direction and you could see the treetops coming out of the fog. And I thought, man, what a beautiful dreamscape this would be to fly through. It was warm. It was, it was good. It was good. Laid out the wing. Warmed up the motor. I took the drone and pointed it out here to the southeast to set up a time lapse. And it takes, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes to do a time lapse of like the morning fog rolling. I just locked the drone in, set it to auto land. But the dags that live out here on the porch, they try to attack the drone if I'm not standing here like waiting on them to, to get them off of it when it lands. So I had to be here whether I was landing it or not. So I set all the gear up, fueled the paramotor, warmed it up, clipped it in. All I had to do, I even had the helmet on, waiting on the drone to land to keep the dogs off of it. It lands, I fold it up, set it down, go clip in and take off. And as soon as I cleared the trees on the east side of the property, white out. Six AM today. Fixed a cup of coffee, walked outside. I checked the forecast before I even got out of bed. Patchy dense fog until 9 a.m. Visual observation showed one mile visibility. Patchy low fog. The kind of fog we've all flown over dozens of times. I even took the extra step of flying up a drone and looking around to find that magical dreamscape of bubbly fog with treetops poking out of it everywhere. Kylo puts on a paramotor, launches, music playing. I think it was Rocket Man by Elton John. Now here's the thing about weather. It changes. Forecasts are wrong sometimes. Even for professionals, it's still a guess. At some point in your flying, it will surprise you. For me, this surprise has happened twice. Today was the worst kind of surprise. Visibility immediately dropped to zero. I lose reference to the ground. I started an immediate descent and found trees, only trees. I'm lost. My property and the area surrounding it is an obstruction obstacle course. No good for getting lower and hoping for the best. I need better odds. Violations of laws and regulations is no longer a thought I can dwell on. I'm now operating in the interest of the safety of human life. On a personal note, this is not my first venture into the White Room. I've logged somewhere in the realm of 20 hours instrument training in airplanes, 10 hours real instrument meteorological conditions flying. Also, a few times paragliding inside clouds outside of the United States. My thought, this is now game time. I climb. Our craft have an advantage in IMC in that if you just sit in it, it'll fly level. That's not the case with fixed wing, so my thoughts ease slightly. After a spooky 30-40 second climb, I poke out of the top to find the entire planet blanketed in a white quilt. I'm stuck on top. I do a bit of soul searching while watching the sunrise. Though I'm stuck and lost, I breathe easy. I can only control myself. It's a beautiful sunrise. I take an inventory. Four liters fuel, GPS capable phone, red hot chili peppers breaking the girl is now playing. I open GPS to find a strong signal. I open the map. Dang, I'm over a swamp. No good options. The headwind matches the sunrise, so I dump trims to the fast setting and push. I'm now over my area. I'm continually looking for holes to descend through. There are none. I'm at two liters of fuel and have to calculate my odds. Rock Superstar by Cypress Hill is now playing. The fog is growing thicker. There are still no holes in it. I'm fully oriented, mentally focused. If I run out of fuel and botch it, I lose. I need to go in while things are running. There are large pastures around my property. I select my safest option. I set up an approach into the largest field on the downwind side. I must calculate my glide slope mentally based on ground speed and altitude. I can only see the GPS map and fiddling with the phone with gloves on is a trip to ridiculous town. I smile because I'm good at math. I go in. Spooky time again. About a minute of spooky time. I arrive into the field at 100 feet AGL, turn toward my property and land. I wanted to write down this debrief while it was fresh. Other than a no-go, not sure how this could have been avoided. Update. I have the drone footage. 
The last frame of this time lapse was what I saw one minute before launching. After processing the video, you can clearly see the fog bank moving in. My observation was this last photograph, which still looks pretty benign. Apparently, you know, this is hindsight, it was an 800 foot tall wall of cloud that was pushing in. And I was looking parallel with the front. So I didn't see it on the camera and I didn't pan around again before it, you know, it landed. I was just letting it do its auto thing. And I even looked at the last picture it took and it still looked the same beautiful dreamscape. A little bit brighter now, sun starting to break. I said, okay. But now I'm in this white cloud and I didn't know how thick it was. I still couldn't see anything. So I tried to make a left turn and descend and cross over the road into the field across the street. And when I got low enough that I gained visibility, it was maybe 30 to 50 feet visibility. I saw pine trees and a dirt road. And I didn't have a clue where I was at. I was immediately lost. Worst thing to do is feel around low in fog. You can't see anything. There's a there's some towers and oil rigs and things that you could hit out here, at least 50 feet above the trees. So I climbed, I pinned it. At this point, it's against regulations, but it's in the interest of human safety. Just climbing, I'm just climbing. And having a paramotor is a real advantage in instrument conditions because it's stable. Gravity keeps you centered under the wing. So in an airplane, it's easy to get crooked if you're not trained in instrument flying, which I have some experience. I've got 20 some hours of instrument time some of it hood some of it real imc i've flown into imc by mistake before i say mistake i thought it was good i called it was good the weather said it was good i say good as in doable it was a scud run but shit changed and the ceilings dropped down i end up flying an airplane as to instrument conditions before i was instrument certified that's a story for another day i did that one okay got some clearance from the tower <laughs> they cleared me for a special vfr clearance with three quarter mile visibility and fog and mist. I was like, oh yeah, sure, I'll take it. <laughs> they hooked me up at Tessa Canada that day. Go Julian, it was Julian that did it. But this morning is also inadvertent entry into instrument meteorological conditions. And so I climb and I climb and I climb and maybe a minute later I bust out of the top. And I don't even tell anybody I'm flying. My whole family's asleep, trucks in the front yard. I asked Jen like, if I'd just gone away like, when uh, would you have come looking for me? She said lunch. So now I know if I vanish, I've got you know, six, seven hours, I got to do it alone before anybody starts looking for me. <laughs> but at this point, I had a, maybe a gallon of fuel and the entire world was socked in. I looked downwind of me. When I got up, I could see the sunrise on top and it was just a white blanket and I couldn't see any ground features at all. Well, I didn't know exactly how tall I was at that point, but I was above the clouds and I was getting my bearings and I knew that the wind was supposed to be east. So I pointed towards the sun and just and just sort of set my altitude a few hundred feet above the fog. At no point was I panicking. I was just, you know, I looked back behind me to see if I could had to have come from this way because I flew into it, taking off into the east. And so I looked to the west and I could see where it started to taper, but it was way out. I couldn't even see the airport. And I thought, man, if I turn, I might could beat it. But it was white as far as I could see. It was just a little thinner. Kind of the stuff that I was filming was way the hell away now. So I pulled out the phone and I had gloves on. It was, it was cool-ish enough that I put gloves on for the flight. I had music playing on my phone. I didn't have, I had the GoPro on, but I never turned it on. That's why I'm filming this now. I never did like think about, oh, I need to record this. I was just like, mm, I need to survive this, you know? And so I'm in gaming mode now. So I pull my phone out and I opened up the Google Maps. Had good satellite connection. But, well, what did I open first? It was either Google Maps or the GPS. May have been GPS so I could find my true headwind. Like point it so that I'm going into the wind because the wind was a bit stronger, I could tell. It's blowing all this fog that fast. I knew, I knew it was some wind and it was maybe 10, 15 mile an hour wind. So I pointed straight into it, which happened to be straight at the sunrise. So I had a good reference on the sun and the wind direction because you got no ground references. The clouds are moving and you're moving and everything's in motion when you're on top like that. So you can't use clouds as a reference exactly unless you, you know, orient yourself, you know, whatever shape they are with the winds. Like cloud streets are pretty easy to read, things like that, but not so much this. Well, I pointed the wind, then I opened Google Maps, and I've seen that it blowed me maybe two miles over the swamp out here. We were talking about not being able to get to a bailout, made me think of the story. But that was the most recent time I couldn't make a bailout. Like, uh-oh, I've done put myself in a bad spot. Obviously, weather had something to do with that, and I, I did what I had to do, but that's how it ended up. I was in a bad spot, so I pushed into the wind, and I could see that I've got enough fuel, everything's working, I got some altitude, 
I think I just listened, like I turned the phone back off, put my hand back in my pocket or my glove and, and just pushed into the wind for maybe two songs. Like, let's see, two songs ought to get me back over where I'm over something landable now. So when the songs played, I, I turned back over in the, uh, the map. I did a test glide. I come off of power, and I calculated my ground speed based on my descent rate. And when I got to the top of the fog, I noted that my altitude was 1,200 feet. My property here is about 200, so I had 1,000 feet of cloud, like fog, dense, thick cloud fog to go through. So... That thousand feet and the angle that I calculated in my mind told me right where I needed to come off the power on the map. Basically, it was a Google map instrument approach into a cow field back here in Shangalu, Louisiana on paramotor. And so I got to shoot this approach. I didn't want to run out of gas and then shoot it and then have to do it, you know, 100% make it work. So I, I was going to shoot the approach while I still had motor option, maybe a go around option if I missed it. I, I, I could only look at the map or the GPS and pilot. I couldn't the gloves didn't allow me to toggle back and forth between my screens. So I just set it on the maps and then I figured where I would go in and I just watched my dot on the map, made sure it was accurate. I did some test turns to see if the dot moved the way that I would turn the glider. And so I knew it had a good degree of accuracy and I just went for it and I come down, come down and it was like spooky town for, it was probably about a minute of spooky town, maybe more. I don't know. I, I was just watching the dot. And if I saw the dot drifting, I would turn a little bit and, and get back on course. And the field was elongated. The one that I chose was elongated with the wind. I had power lines at the rear. So I didn't want to short it ever. And it was trees on all of the three sides of it. But it was plenty big enough for the conditions. And by the time I saw the ground, I, I, I immediately saw that, oh, what is that? It's weird how stuff comes out of the fog at 50 feet. So I was at 50 feet when I could see the ground again just barely, and I went down to about 30 feet below the trees, and then I could see the tree line, and I knew where I was. At that point, give up the phone. When I was flying this, I couldn't see anything until I got into this field right here. Paralleled it until I got, I knew the tree line was coming, went over the trees, down into the next field, made a left, followed that tree line into my property, turned and landed by the truck. And when I landed by the truck, it was just completely socked in. Like, like misty rain stuff was falling. It's like, oh man, that was wild, it was wild. So when I get back, I'm just, my mind's blown. Like, what the F? <laughs> Good content. So I looked at the, uh, the time lapse to think, am I even in the same dimension? Because I was, psh, I, I was what the f is this, is what I was thinking. I got nothing I saw that whole morning indicated thousand feet of clouds fly through me back to the ground. So I look at the time lapse and you can see at the very corner, I'll show it here. You can see the fog coming in. But it's, just, it, it's if you look at the image, I mean, if you watch the whole time lapse, which I didn't process the time lapse footage, it, it takes a few minutes to do that. I just looked at the last picture, which is this, and then it's like, oh, it don't look scary. It looks great. It looks fun. But it wasn't, wasn't fun. I wasn't scared either, though. I was, I was like perfectly calm, cool, collected the whole time. Felt good. I performed well that morning. All the practice paid off. I guess more of the story is practice. I thought I'd tell you about it. Thank you for watching Terrible Content. Subscribe more. Much love. See you later. Come on.